Good morning, Sarah. Have you seen what a beautiful day it is? How about I walk in the countryside and then we can relax by the pool? I don't really feel like going out. I'd rather stay in and read. Oh, come on, Sarah. Don't be your own antisocial self. Let's have some fun together. Why don't we play a trick on the guys who are still asleep? We could wake them up with a nice bucket of cold water. What a stupid trick. Nothing's changed, but I still love you, Julie. Beautiful girl with brown eyes, dusting away my heart size. That's all we needed. Oh, you don't understand, Sarah. This is poetry. This is the story of a secret love. Ah, uh, poetry, love, tricks. Enough of this nonsense. If I'd known you were all going to be so amusing, I never would have organized this reunion. Beautiful girl with brown eyes, dusting away my heart aside. Oh no, Paolo, look what a mess you've made. And by the way, you didn't clean the kitchen last night, did you? Come on, Michelle, give me a hand. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't touch that awful stuff. When are you going to get the mess hit? I never touch that awful stuff. I hate detergents and the multinationals that make them. And I hate cleaning too. Oh, come on, we're on holiday. What is this racket? And what is going on in here? Has World War Three broken out? It's just started. Well, soldier Sandra's launch her offensive, but the Paolo Michel's squadron is responding well to the attack and will defend its position to the bitter end. Stop playing around. Roll your sleeves up. The sooner we start working, the sooner we'll finish and we'll be able to relax by the pool. Wait a minute. I was just thinking of going back to bed. If I'd known what was waiting for me, I would have slept until midday. Maybe we could ask Sarah to give us a hand. Well, you must be joking. She just asked not to be disturbed and giving her a bad mood over the last couple of days. Well, we could ask Mike, though. Oh, no. I just saw him a few minutes ago. I asked him where he was going, and he said he was going to the village to buy a newspaper. He asked me if he should do some shopping, but I told him we'd all go to the supermarket together later on. Mm. Fantastic. First planning up, then the shopping. Just the sort of holiday that I'm dreaming of. Well, it's only the four of us here. Let's shut the jobs out. Just a minute. Just a minute. I've got an idea. How about you and Anne having a cleaning competition time in here? You clear one part and you the other. Yes, and I can keep the time and Paolo provides some beautiful background music. Oh, at the end we'll see who's been the fastest. And, of course, which part of the kitchen shines the most? I think it's a great idea. You and Anna are always arguing about who's the best at doing things. Oh, well, this could be the right moment to show off your domestic skills. And the winner will be crowned Queen of Housewives. What do you think? Um, well, it's, a, it's an unusual idea. It's very original, but, but I'm not sure. Oh, come oh. on, Anne. Why not? It would be interesting. Okay, you've convinced me. Shall we start? Mm -hmm. Great. So, Sandra, you clean the sink, uh, the cooker, and this part of the floor. Uh -huh. Oh, and you've got the oven, the table, and this other part of the floor. Uh, okay. Okay? Ready, get set, go! Sponge in hand. Sandra is cleaning the taps while Anne is intently sweeping the floor. Now Sandra is spraying the turtle onto the cooking rings and starts it on the table. Time is passing by. Another contestant is showing signs of fatigue. The race is open and nothing is separating the two cleaners. Those college days were so long ago. You were so clever, so beautiful too. But I never forgotten you. Nothing's changed. I still try love you. Beautiful girl with brown eyes, dusting away my heart. Sighs. Finished. Incredible.
You both finished at exactly the same time. Come on, Michelle. We need to decide which is the cleanest part. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, this one. Well, after a considerable discussion, the jury declares that the winner is. Come on! Don't keep us in the dark. Who's won? Or oh, you've bought one. It's a dead heat. You've finished together, and both parts of the kitchen are perfectly clean. Okay. Well, maybe it's better this way, Sandra. At least there'll be no arguing about... about who's better at cleaning. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Let's forget our rivalries, at least for today. Come on, let's shake on it. Okay. We're both champion cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> A cleaning competition. Now that's an interesting concept. It could only be invented by Anne. Now that is something where I would definitely lose. Cleaning competition, no way. What about you? Anyway, that last episode was great because it helps me introduce to you one of the most difficult grammatical forms in the English language which is called the third conditional. We have three conditionals in English. One, two, three. The first, let me give you an example. If I see him, I'll tell him. That's number one. If I saw him, I would tell him. That's number two. Number three is what we're going to look at now. If I had seen him, I would have told him. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Too much grammar. But last lesson was useful because we learned the first part of the third conditional, which is the past perfect. They used it in the episode. It was Sarah. She said, if I'd known, if I had known, you were all going to be so amusing. I would never have organized this reunion. Now that's a good example and it's difficult. We often use the third conditional when we talk about a regret. Let me give you an example. I saw a beautiful house. It was quite expensive, but I liked it. I needed time to think about it. And I didn't buy it immediately. And then somebody else bought it. So I think, oh, if I had bought that house, I would have been so happy. So that's expressing a regret. So let's go to the screen and see how it's constructed, because it's really not easy. It takes Time to be fluent in the third conditional. The grammar is this, if, because if describes a hypothetical situation. Now, when you're talking about the third conditional, it's an unreal, it's an impossible situation because you can't change it anymore. So we start with if, then the past perfect, which we learned last lesson, then we use would, which we also use in the second conditional, followed by have, the infinitive, and then followed by the past participle. So let's see how that works. If I hadn't gone, past perfect, to the party, I would have gone to bed early. Okay. So, I went to the party and I didn't go to bed early. So the consequence is, if I hadn't gone to the party, I would have gone to bed early. But I didn't go to bed early. Okay, so what was the consequence of that? Now, imagine, I drank a lot of wine and I had a terrible headache. 
and you think, ooh, regret. If I hadn't drunk, past perfect negative, if I hadn't drunk so much wine, I wouldn't have had such a bad headache yesterday. Now that's difficult, look at that. Wouldn't have, negative, wouldn't have, plus the past participle of the verb have. So I wouldn't have had. Now this is not easy, it will take time for you to use fluently. You have to keep practicing it. Practice it in the toilet, in the bath, when you're walking down the street. Okay. Another example. Now, I didn't set the alarm, so I woke up late. If I had remembered to set the alarm, I wouldn't have woken, past participle, up late. If I had remembered to set the alarm, I wouldn't have woken up late. Seems difficult, doesn't it? Takes practice. Another example. I missed the bus. I didn't get up. The bus went without me. So third conditional. If I had got up earlier, I would have caught, catch, caught, caught the bus. If I had got up earlier, I would have caught the bus. Impossible situation, can't change it. If I hadn't been late for work because I missed the bus, so I was late for work, my boss wouldn't have been so annoyed. Wouldn't have been, you notice be in the past participle, been so annoyed. And the last one, well, we lost the contract because I went to the party, I drank too much wine and I missed the bus. Everything was late. <laughs> so if I hadn't gone to the party, we wouldn't have lost, lose, lost, lost the contract. If I hadn't gone to that party, we wouldn't have lost the contract. Okay. Terrible consequences of my irresponsible behavior. So that's the third conditional. Please don't worry. It is difficult, probably the one of the most difficult things in the language, and it takes time to get fluent in it. But just keep practicing. Just take a phrase and say it to yourself often. Like, if I hadn't done that, if I, or if I had studied more, I would have passed the exam as an example. If I had studied more, I would have passed the exam. All right? So, happy practicing. Bye. Hi, Sarah. Do you have a minute? I'd like to talk. Sh sure. Um, well, I'd like to apologize for the other evening. I swear I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know anything about what had happened at the bar. Okay. I'll forgive you this time. Great. I'm glad we've cleared up that misunderstanding. So, so tell me, how did the fire start? I don't really know. The lighting system had been checked two days earlier by the electrician. And the sprinkler system was working fine too. It had just been installed, but it didn't work. How's that possible? I don't really know. Someone must have thrown a cigarette on the curtains, which caught fire straight away. The whole pub burned down in a few hours. The fire brigade couldn't save the place. It all went up in flames. I wish I'd been more careful. I wished I'd checked everything more carefully. But it's not your fault, Sarah. How could you have prevented the fire? Come on, you've got to pull yourself out of this. You can't spend your whole life thinking about your problems. You used to be such a fun person. Life changes us, Mike. We've all changed since our university days. Sure. But I'd like to help you find your old enthusiasm again. Tell me, how can I possibly help? Well... I'm not sure. You're embarrassing me. 
You shouldn't feel embarrassed, not with me. We've always trusted each other, no? What time is it? 4.15. Oh, no. The match, it, it's already started. You know, Mike, we were talking just then. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Um, we'll continue our conversation later. I've really got to watch the game now. It's a great match, Chelsea against Manchester United. You know that doesn't interest me in the slightest. You haven't changed, Mike. All you think about is football. Football's the only important thing in your life. You're exaggerating now, sir. And you don't understand anything. All you care about is football. Maybe if I wore a Manchester United shirt, you'd pay me more attention. Uh, what did you say? That's all I needed is you with your stupid guitar. I've had enough. I'm going to my room. What's wrong with her? I don't think my son's that bad. What do you think, Mike? I'd like to tell you. I love you. Paolo, can I watch the game in peace and quiet? I love you. That's enough. Uh, I'm going to watch this somewhere else. I can't believe it. They are all mad here. I'd like to tell you. I love you. But I'm afraid of being wrong. Beautiful girl. With brown eyes. That's in a way. Oh, man, at last someone who appreciates my talent. I knew you were an expert in music. That song, Paolo, what does it mean? Oh, I wrote it. Thanks to Mike that gave me the inspiration. You like it? Oh, no. Mike? Yeah? That's not possible. Well, I don't believe it. Unbelievable? They are all mad in the South. Beautiful girl. We burn eyes. That's in a way. My heart sighs. Hello again and welcome back for some more English language. And this lesson is a continuation of what we started in the last lesson where we learned the third conditional, if I had known, I wouldn't have gone, where we are, are expressing a form of regret. And in fact, in this lesson, I want to show you another form of regret, which is very common in English. And in the last episode, you had a very good example of poor Sarah, who is expressing her regrets. She said, I wish I had been more careful. I wish I had checked everything more carefully, you know, when the pub burnt down. So she starts the sentence with, I wish, and that's her desire, a desire that she would like to have fulfilled. It's too late. So we use wish to express desires like that. Let me give you an example in the present tense. I can say, I'm fat. 
and I have a desire which is to become thinner. So I would say, I wish I were thinner. Let's look at the screen and I'll help you with this because we can use wish in the present and also in the past, so the grammar form changes. Let's first look at how we use it in the present. I say I'm fat, I'm overweight, all right? So my wish is, I wish I were thinner. Now, this is very interesting because it's an example of the subjunctive in English. Now, the subjunctive has disappeared from the language, but only in this case do we use it. We don't say, I wish I was, but I wish I were thinner, okay? So an important exception, that. Another example is, I don't know how to cook, and I have a desire, a wish to change that. So I could say, I wish I knew how to cook. Notice that the verb know goes into the past, simple past. I wish I knew how to cook. She can't speak another language, so the girl can't speak another language. She has a desire. She says she wishes she could speak another language. So we're in the present. She wishes, I wish, you wish, he wishes, she could in the simple past. All right? She wishes, wishes she could. So that is a present desire that you have. If, in the case of Sarah, your desire is in the past, which often becomes then a regret, the grammatical form changes. Have a look. I didn't buy that car. Now imagine uh, you see a car, it's a bit like my house. You see a car and you don't buy it and then you regret it. You think, I wish, in the present, I had bought. Now, you remember the past perfect. We looked at it in the two previous lessons. Here it is again. I wish I had bought. We contract it and it becomes I'd. Okay? Now, be careful because I'd, when it's contracted in English, could be I would or I had. Now, would would never be followed by the past participle. So you can tell if it's had because the past participle follows. All right, so I wish I'd bought, I wish I'd bought it, all right? Another example. She spent so much money last year and now she's got problems. So she wishes she hadn't spent so much money. All right, past perfect. He didn't come to the performance, that's the situation, his desire in the past. He wishes he'd come to the performance. Or I could say, I, I wish he'd come to the performance. All right? One more. We lost the tickets. They wish they hadn't lost the tickets. Okay? So, that is an, an important verb, wish. It's important because often we want to express our desires both in the present, I wish I were thinner, and also in the past, I wish I had studied more languages. All right, so when you want to use wish, think, is it present, is it past, and then choose the correct grammar form. Great. So, I wish I had met you earlier. We could have done a lot of language together. But I look forward to seeing you next lesson. Okay? Bye. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Music World. And welcome to Tony Moore, our music expert. Hello, Lucy. And good morning to all our music fans. Well, Tony, on May 16th, 2006, a Stradivari violin was sold at auction in New York for three and a half million dollars. The Christian Hammer violin, as it's called, had become the world's most expensive musical instrument. So why is this violin so special? Well, this violin was made in 1707 by Antonio Stradivari. 
in the family workshop in Cremona, near Milan in northern Italy. The years 1700 to 1720 are called Stradivari's golden period because of the exceptional sound quality of the instruments he made during this time. So, why is the sound quality so good? Oh, good question, Lucy. During this period, Stradivari came up with some tiny improvements to the shape of the violin. Experts think that these changes to the shape of the violin, particularly to the shape of the belly and the back plate, may, in part, be responsible for their incredible sound quality. So, it's the shape of the violins that makes them so sought after by the world's best musicians. Yes, but not only the shape. You know, the wood Stradivari used to make his violins may have been stored underwater in the Venice Lagoon before he bought it. It's thought that this may have damaged the wood slightly and may in part be responsible for the special sound. So the shape and wood that was stored in the lagoon in Venice is why Stradivari violins are so special. Well, actually, there are one or two other possible explanations. Tell us more. Some music historians say that the varnish Stradivari used may be behind the exceptional sound quality. Others say the secret is in the glue he used. And, and two American scientists have recently suggested that the quality of these violins is due to the cold weather experienced in Europe during the period when the violins were made. Cold weather and wonderful violins. I don't see the connection, Tony. Well, you see, Lucy, the colder weather resulted in trees growing more slowly. The wood from these trees was denser than normal and makes a better sound when it's used for making violins. Interesting. I can see now that everything's perfect about these violins. By the way, who bought the Christian Hammer violin? We don't know, actually. Well, the buyer remained anonymous. He or she is probably a private collector. And what do you think the new owner will do with this wonderful instrument? Well, music lovers are hoping that the owner will allow the world's best violinist to play the instrument at concerts around the world. This has already happened in the past uh, with this violin, too. Its previous owner allowed Yehudi Menuhin to play the Christian Hammer 15 times. So, we'll be able to listen to its glorious sound again. Well, Tony, thanks for a fascinating programme. Goodbye. Goodbye. And of course, goodbye to all music lovers. We'll meet again soon for another edition of Music World. Wow, I never thought a violin could be so expensive. Of course, we're talking about a very special violin. The violin is what we call a string instrument. A violinist is a musician who plays the violin and he or she uses a bow. A bow is a long wooden rod with horse hairs used for playing string instruments. The violin we spoke about today was sold at an auction for a lot of money. An auction is a public sale, a place where people bid against each other to buy something. To bid means to offer a price. You can buy almost anything at an auction – houses, furniture, paintings, instruments. The buyer of this Stradivari violin remained anonymous. To remain anonymous means to keep your identity secret. The owner of the Stradivari is probably a private collector. A private collector is a person who collects things for their own enjoyment. The Stradivari was made in a workshop. A workshop is a place where craftsmen make things. A craftsman is like an artisan. Well, as we heard, it's a violin with incredible sound quality. The quality of the sound is excellent. One reason could be its shape. The shape of something is its physical form. The belly of the violin is the part under the strings. We also have bellies. Your belly is this part of our body. And the back plate of the violin is the part at the back. Again, we also have backs. Your back is this part of your body. So, it's one of the most sought-after instruments in the world. 
If something is sought after, it means many people would like to have it. Well, I'd like to have the $3.5 million. That's all we have time for this week. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of Climate Change. In the studio with me is our expert, Susan Furley. Hello, Eric. And good morning, everyone. Well, Susan, let's talk about the weather in Scotland today. You know, I'm planning to visit the West Coast this summer, and I really don't know what kind of clothes to take with me. It's cold there, isn't it? Not really. Take your swimming costume, a beach towel, and some suntan cream. You're joking, aren't you? Not at all. The west coast of Scotland has beautiful islands and locks and gardens full of tropical plants. Really? Yes, they're full of tropical plants. Hmm. Tropical plants in Scotland. How is that possible? It's thanks to the Gulf Stream. You know, it's one of the world's most important ocean currents. It carries large amounts of warm seawater from the Caribbean Sea to the northwest of Europe. Hmm. This warm water brings about an increase in the temperature here of about 9 degrees centigrade. Without it, the weather in Great Britain would be a lot colder. <laughs> I thought it was cold. So, the west coast of Scotland is a tropical paradise? That's fantastic. Well, let's not exaggerate. There are tropical plants, but it's not exactly like the Caribbean. Though the winters are very mild here. At least, they are for the moment. Since 1950, scientists have noticed that the flows of cold water in the North Atlantic that are associated with the Gulf Stream have decreased by 20%. We're not talking about the Gulf Stream here, but this change could slow down the Gulf Stream itself. And what's behind this change in the North Atlantic? Well, the water in the world's oceans and seas is constantly moving. The speed and direction of these movements of water are controlled by different factors, such as the shape of the ocean floor, the salinity of the water, and the Earth's rotation. Well, scientists have noticed that the ice sheets of the North Pole and Greenland are melting due to the greenhouse effect. This is reducing the salinity of the water in the North Atlantic and is reducing the flows of cold water that help the Gulf Stream bring warm water to Western Europe. So, are you saying that the seawater and the temperature in Great Britain could become colder? Yes. This has already happened in the past. Scientists have discovered that the Gulf Stream slowed down or maybe even stopped completely about 11,000 years ago. This brought about a fall in the temperatures in Northern Europe of 5 degrees. And could the same thing happen again now? Yes. Scientists fear that a knock-on effect of the salinity reduction may be the slowing down of the Gulf Stream again. And what would the effects of this be? The worst predictions suggest there could be a new ice age in Great Britain. Wow, that sounds frightening. Well, perhaps Great Britain will become a new centre for the winter sports. Perhaps the Winter Olympic Games will take place in Scotland. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks to Susan for early. Goodbye, Eric. Goodbye, Susan. And goodbye, everyone. Well, apparently I should take my swimming costume and beach towel and some suntan cream to Scotland. A swimming costume is what we wear to go swimming. A towel is what we use to dry ourselves. And a beach towel is a big towel for the beach. Suntan cream, sometimes called suntan lotion, is the cream we use to protect ourselves from the sun. I thought Scotland was a cold country, but actually the winters are even very mild. Mild means not very cold. Susan explained that this is thanks to the Gulf Stream, which is an important ocean current. An ocean current is a movement of seawater. Seawater is a compound noun that means the water of the sea. The Gulf Stream brings warm seawater from the Caribbean, and this brings about an increase in temperature. To bring about is a phrasal verb. It means to make something happen. But 
The flows of cold water have decreased. When water moves, we say it flows. So a flow of cold water is the movement of cold water. The Gulf Stream could slow down. To slow down means to become slower. What is behind these changes? This means what is the reason for these changes? Well, the ice sheets in the North Pole are melting. An ice sheet is a layer of ice, also a compound noun. When ice melts, it becomes water. This is a reducing the salinity of the water. The salinity is the amount of salt it contains. It is also reducing the flows of cold water that helps the Gulf Stream bring warm water to Europe. This could bring about a fall in temperature. A fall is a decrease. We call this is a knock-on effect. A knock-on effect is an effect of an effect of something happening. We've run out of time again, so I'll say goodbye and see you soon. Now let's watch the whole episode together. Watch the subtitles carefully because the language points that we studied together are highlighted. All right? Enjoy your viewing. Hi, and welcome back to English Today. This is DVD 16 and the fourth DVD of your upper intermediate level. And in this DVD, we'll begin with another two episodes of our story, That's Life, followed by our special TV programs where our music expert will be talking about the world's most expensive violin. And then our weather expert will be looking at the possibility of a new ice age in England. Then in the grammar section, We'll learn how to use the third conditional form in English, which is not easy. And then we'll be looking at how to make sentences using the verb wish to express a regret. So, enjoy yourselves. Hello again, and in this lesson we're going to learn what is probably the most difficult English language construction, the third conditional. Let me give you an example. If I'd known, I wouldn't have gone. If I had known, I wouldn't have gone. Now that's difficult, and we'll study it together after. But first our story. It's morning. Sarah's in the kitchen eating breakfast, and Michelle joins her. Good morning, Sarah. Have you seen what a beautiful day it is? How about I walk in the countryside and then we can relax by the pool? I don't really feel like going out. I'd rather stay in and read. Oh, come on, Sarah. Don't be your own antisocial self. Let's have some fun together. Why don't we play a trick on the guys who are still asleep? We could wake them up with a nice bucket of cold water. What a stupid trick. Nothing's changed, but I still love you, Julie. Beautiful girl with brown eyes, dusting away my heart sighs. That's all we needed. Oh, you don't understand, Sarah. This is poetry. This is the story of a secret love. Ah, uh, poetry, love, tricks. Enough of this nonsense. If I'd known you were all going to be so amusing, I never would have organized this reunion. <laughs> Beautiful girl 